Hello, this vid is called Fear and Needing in China and the US and it is about the recent uh, visit of Obama to the United States uh, from the United States to China. Now this really has showed a, um, a key change in the power relationship uh, bilaterally between China and the US. Throughout the Bush um, terms of office um, China and America's relationship the United States relationship with China was has been sh strongly symbiotic that is that both economies depend on each other China produces uh, consumer goods for export um, and in return the United States uh, provides more dollars onto the open money markets for China to buy up, to buy up America's debt. So there's a flow of um, dollars and what's the Chinese, the Chinese currency is called the renminbi between the Chinese uh, central bank and the American central bank, the Federal Reserve, and all the banks in America are part of the Federal Reserve system. Now. Obviously, there is more than just presidential visits between China and America. There are relationships between the universities, between the militaries, between different lobbyist groups and different think tanks, such as the Council of Foreign Relations, of which Obama is a, is a member. But of course, China is its own Council of Foreign Relations. Now, they don't steer pol they don't create policy, but they advise uh, politicians, and this is a political convention which is outside of the American Constitution. Um, now, to understand the real hard politics of China and America's um, relationship, there is the fear side. One, China is the third largest, uh, sorry, the fourth largest economy in the world at 4.3 tr trillion dollars a year in uh, productivity of GDP um, it's then Japan is just a it's just ahead with 4.6 trillion dollars then it's the United States at 14.6 trillion dollars and then the EU is the top economy with 18.6 trillion dollars now the um, military on the military side China is set to overtake China, uh, China's rivals such as Russia, the US and the EU militarily by um, 2025. That's not lot that long away. China's already built its first um, carrier group. Um, it's also buying up what is, what is left of the um, old moribund Soviet uh, fleets from from Russia, from uh, Port Arthur, um, to uh, to incorporate itself into its own navy. Of course, most of that has been bought by North Korea, uh, but it's not highly politicized. And this is the, North Korea is also a um, as well as Taiwan is also a bone of contention between. Um, China and the US, although on the North Korean issue, because the North Koreans are trying to develop nuclear nuclear weapons, the uh, four party talks between uh, Russia, China, um, the Korea itself, and Japan are um, of sort of in agreement that um, South Korea and, and the rest of the neighbors of North Korea don't want it to have nuclear weapons. Uh, but China and South Korea obviously produce most of the aid that goes to North Korea and so China has the whip hand over North Korea and that's why the Americans talk to them rather than the North Koreans. On the, um, on the western side of China, China has developed a massive trading and security block called the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now, uh, I was uh, told that when I was at university that a few years ago these were only sort of people who just met for some drinks and some informal conversations but really 
the Shanghai Cooperation Organization has now moved on to real politics, real trade, and real cooperation. The recent um, military uh, maneuvers with with Russia um, in war gaming against a possible um, imaginary force that's that was it's reminiscent of the uh, United States, if you was to look at it, and using advanced tactics, not just um, symmetrical tactics, conventional tactics, but asymmetric warfare as well, which China has learnt from Iraq, places like Iran. Um, there's also the problem for the United States, why they fear the fear China in Africa and in Central Asia, is because uh, although China has its own insurgency, there seems to be a lot of um, Chinese-made and Russian-made weapons falling into the hands of insurgents. Now, it doesn't mean that China um, Islamic insurgents. It doesn't mean that China uh, sold them directly to those Islamic insurgents. They probably sold them to Sudan and Pakistan, and then they those places then sold them onto those insurgents who they back because they back Sudan and Pakistan and Saudi Arabia back Al Qaeda. Uh, so there's many geopolitical um, problems associated with China and also China needs to export hundreds of millions of its people to Africa. Over 20 million Chinese have already moved to Africa already. So they've basically taken over Africa without a shot. Uh, the only place they're being resisted is through the North African Union which is being created by the European Union and where the in Chad where the Europeans have got 18,000 soldiers. Uh, to resist uh, Sudan. So both sides are using proxies. Although the European Union is not a proxy of the United States, it's an equal partner of the United States. Now, what is the most interesting part is the Federal Reserve System's role with the Chinese Central Bank. The Chinese control their, their currency and do not let it float on the open market. And so therefore they American firms consider they have an unfair advantage in export um, because they keep the renminbi, or as it's called in the West, the UN uh, currency, artificially low. Um, this allows them to keep exporting to um, America. But there is no free trade between America and China. In fact, they have a trade war. Um, now, the Federal Reserve has been using the dollar as a, um, as a tool of its uh, uh, nationalistic uh, economic policy in that they keep, they keep increasing the money supply of the dollar which is based on, on basically credit GDP output, the consumer price index, retail index um, and it's not really based by anything, any commodities that are substantial, like such as gold, platinum, oil. Uh, uh, sorry, in it, the dollar is linked to oil. Um, so when the dollar falls in price, oil falls in price, which gives the Americans a ability to import or refine oil cheaper than other countries. Also, every time you transfer your currency into say from yuan to euros you have to convert it to dollars because they're the reserve currency to then get your euros to buy european goods to then transfer those goods back to china you then have to go and change it again through the dollars which gives the americans an unfair advantage and also there's as i said there's a trade war going on between china um, this is part one of this vid and i will be doing a second part of the vid on the actual meeting of Obama and more on the Federal Reserve System and the uh, dollar. Thank you and look forward to part two.